This is the Arturia Mini Lab 3, the latest version of one of the most popular mini MIDI controller keyboards, and I can't stop staring at it. It's beautiful, stylish, minimalist, and it has every feature I wanted. Well, almost. In this video, I'll share everything you need to know about the Mini Lab 3, key feel, DAW control, ARP and chord features, knobs, faders, screen, and one major feature that sets the Mini Lab 3 apart from almost every other keyboard out there. Before we get started, if you're new around here, I'm Sanjay C. I have lots of videos on music production and the latest music gear. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I bring you the latest gear and a Saturday news video with a free plugin and exclusive discount codes every week. I'll add links below to the best prices for the Mini Lab and links to my reviews of other keyboards you might consider. So let's talk Mini Lab 3. This mini MIDI controller keyboard is currently $109, which is comparable to most other competitors. One of the winning features of the previous Mini Lab was the key feel. So does the Mini Lab 3 have great key feel? Yeah, it pretty much feels identical to the previous model, but that's a great thing. These 25 velocity sensitive keys have the best feel of all mini controllers I've tried. If you're a pianist, you'll be happy with these. It feels natural and it's easy to be expressive. Arturia got the keys right, period. So what about the drum pads? Well, they feel slightly better than the outgoing model, but the difference is minimal. And at times I do have to tap a little harder to get some sound out of it. Above the keys, you've got a gorgeous control panel, pitch and mod strips, octave up and down, eight endless knobs, four faders, and eight velocity sensitive RGB backlit pads. You also have a screen and a ninth knob that's reserved for other functions I'll get into in this video. But before I get to that, let's take a look at the back because we've got a few changes here. USB-C for starters. There's a port for a pedal and now a full size MIDI out port. That's nice if you wanna use this with a synth, especially with the new arpeggiator and chord features. But we have a lot more to explore. Let's take a look at the DAW features next. The Mini Lab 3 offers DAW control for Ableton Live, FL Studio, Bitwig, Logic Pro, Reason, and also the MCU standard. So this will work with pretty much every DAW out there. Press shift anytime to access the transport controls. Stop, play, record, tap, and loop on or off. Transport features like these were missing on the previous version of the Mini Lab, so this is definitely a welcome feature. The only drawback is that these are not dedicated transport controls, meaning they share functions with drum pads. So you need to tap the shift button to access them. That extra button push may not give you optimal efficiency, but I'm nitpicking here. I am really glad they added this feature. Now, check this out. When I tested the DAW control features, I discovered how much excellent control you get. In Ableton, you can use the knobs to control Ableton devices. And you can see the selected device's name on the screen, which is awesome, so you know what you're controlling. And when you turn a knob, the screen shows you the name of the parameter you're controlling. And the unit of measure, hertz, decibels. This is done very nicely. The four faders control one track at a time. Here's what I mean. Fader 1 controls the selected track's volume, 2 and 3 control the sends, and 4 controls the pan. I wish there was a way to control multiple track volumes at the same time instead, but that's not possible out of the box. I'm kind of surprised they implemented it this way, but you may like this, and it is useful to always have these controls for the active track. In Ableton Session View, clips can be triggered with the pads and the active scene by clicking in the black knob.
In the arrangement view, the black knob navigates the timeline. So the Mini Lab 3 covers great Ableton control, but it doesn't give you as much dedicated control as the Novation and Launch Key Mini, which Novation really designed around Ableton Live. But the Launch Key is missing a major feature that gives Artoria an edge. I'll get to that in a sec. In Logic, the Mini Lab 3 gives you all the same transport controls and the track names and plugin parameters show on the screen. In FL Studio, you get similar features and screen feedback of preset names and plugin parameters that you're controlling with the knobs. Arturia has added more features like a built-in arpeggiator and built-in chords to bring the Minilab up to par with the latest modern MIDI controllers out there. But before we explore those, I want to cover the feature that makes the Minilab stand out from almost every other MIDI keyboard out there. Deep virtual instrument control. The Mini Lab 3 gives you outstanding control of one of the best virtual instruments out there, Analog Lab. Analog Lab is a plugin that gives you access to Artoria's massive collection of virtual synths, pianos, electric pianos, strings, and more. And they've integrated the control of Analog Lab right into the Mini Lab 3. So you can navigate all the presets from Artoria, load them, and then modify and sculpt the sounds with the eight knobs and the four faders. The black knob cycles through presets in Analog Lab, and you press it in to load a sound. You can also use shift and turn to cycle through sound types. This is the most control that a mini keyboard gives you, even more than native instruments with their complete control software and their M32 keyboard. This is a sound designer's dream, and Arturia has executed it beautifully on the Mini Lab 3. And the deep virtual instrument integration is something that is a sure win over other MIDI controllers at this price. Question, how important is virtual instrument control to you in your studio? Comment below. By the way, Arturia includes Analog Lab intro with the Mini Lab 3, so you have tons of sounds to get you started and some other software I'll get to in a bit. But for now, let's explore the other two features that Arturia has added, arpeggiator, and chord features. You activate the arpeggiator using the shift button, and a long press with shift gives you arpeggiator options. You can do a lot here. Change the mode, up and down, change the rate, the division, octaves, even swing. Chord mode is accessed by pressing shift and the hold button. Now, single notes play chords. You can create chords by long pressing shift and hold and then playing the notes in the chord. So what about the Mini Lab 3's drawbacks? There are a couple, but before I get to that, if you're interested in checking out my comparison of all the best mini keyboards available right now, check out the video right here. I cover Akai, Native Instruments, M-Audio, and more in that video. So there are a couple drawbacks with the Mini Lab 3 when comparing it to the previous model and some other keyboards out there. The previous version of the Mini Lab had 16, yes, 16 knobs that gave you a few more controls for sculpting sound in Analog Lab. But this new version, 3, has 8 knobs and 4 faders, so 12 physical controls in all. Still good, and more than enough for my sound design needs. The Mini Lab 3 doesn't have a dedicated note repeat button like some other keyboards, like the 
Akai MPK Mini Mark III. Note repeat is useful if you're drumming on the pads and want a quick way to repeat a hi-hat, for example. The only way to achieve this on the Mini Lab 3 is to activate the arpeggiator, which requires a bunch of other taps and presses, and you only get that effect on the keyboard, not the pads. Listen, neither of these drawbacks are deal breakers in my opinion. I just thought I should let you know. So what about software? Well, the Mini Lab 3 comes with Ableton Live Lite, which is a beginner DAW if you don't have one already. You also get Analog Lab Intro, which is an excellent place to start exploring sound design with Artoria's incredible collection of virtual instruments. They've also included the UVI Model D Grand Piano, Native Instruments, The Gentleman Upright Piano, and a two-month subscription to Loot Cloud. You also have the ability to customize your controls using Artoria's Control Editor. Good software package for sure. And if you plan to expand your collection of software synths from Artoria, the Mini Lab 3 is a no-brainer. I want to talk about build quality next. Arturia is known for excellent build quality, and the Mini Lab 3 is on par with the Mini Lab 2's build quality. The previous model had a metal base, which I didn't think was necessary. The latest model has a plastic bottom, which feels sturdy and reduces weight considerably. The knobs and faders feel great and precise. They have a tighter turn feel, more resistance compared to the older model and compared to some other keyboards. The Mini Lab 3 comes in two colors, the classic Arturia white and a black version. Arturia has included a five-year warranty on the Mini Lab 3, so they really want to show you that they're standing behind their build quality. Lastly, this is a gorgeous controller. I have to say it's the most beautiful MIDI controller available right now. The design is simple, modern, elegant, and inviting. I want to display this in my studio. So there you have it. I think Arturia has focused on the right things with the Mini Lab 3, and I think they've given us another winner here. Excellent key feel, transport controls, deep virtual instrument control, a very useful screen, and all the essentials for controlling your DAW. The Mini Lab has been one of the most popular MIDI controllers on the market, and Arturia has now given us nearly everything the previous model was missing. If you like this video, hit the like button and leave a comment if you have any questions. Keep making the music you love, and if you're interested in checking out other keyboard reviews on my channel, watch the videos right here. See you there.